how redirectors are useful in a Linux or Unix operating system. So whenever we talk about redirectors, we need to talk about two important components, which is nothing but input and output. So how you provide the input to the system? So we're, we usually provide the input to the system through our keyboard. And whenever you execute any command, so where do we receive the output is on a terminal. If you would like to replace both the things with a file, then you need redirector. So how you are going to replace it? So instead of taking the key, instead of taking an input from keyboard, you are going to take it with a file. Instead of getting the output on the screen, you are going to put it in a file. So how do you do it? Let's see. So firstly, we'll talk about input redirector. So uh, that we are usually call it as STDIN, so which is nothing but standard input, and we usually determine with that with the uh, less than symbol. So let's talk about a small example to send an email so that you will understand the, the standard input functionality. So to send an email, usually we require three basic things. So the one is to address, and the other one is subject, and whereas the other one is message body. So let us write a small, uh, I mean small example, or let us execute a small mail command and let's understand how the standard input is working here. So here is my Linux operating system. So I logged in as a user. So if I use my, so I can see uh, I logged in as a EC2 user. I'm going to send an email to the same user of the same machine. And let's check how it, how I can send an email. To send an email, I'm going to use a command or a utility called as mail command. And hyphen S stands for subject. So let's say I'm going to type test email and to whom I would like to send. So I would like to send to the same user of same machine, which I'm going to use localhost. If you have a proper uh, mail server and you can use a proper email address. Here, I'm going to type the message, hello there. Who are you? And after typing the message, I have to press dot enter. So Tell to the main utility that you are you're end up with the message. So here, if you observe this particular input, you have provided with a keyboard. Whereas, if you would like to replace that particular thing with a file, we are going to use input redirector. Before to that, let's see whether we got an email or not. So as I sent to the same user, which I already logged in. So here you can see I got an email. So which you can see the subject is a test email, whatever I have used while use, while sending an email. If you would like to see the content, you can just type the mail number, whatever is just given here. So here you can see the mail is sent to that particular user. Now, let's say if you have, if in the previous scenario, you used mail command and to send an email, the message body you have given through the keyboard. Now I'm going to replace that one with a file. For that, I need to have a file written. So uh, with the content already. So I have a file here. So which is already the content is content is written here. I'm going to use this particular file as an input and I'm going to provide the input to the mail command where mail command picks the input from this file and sends an email. So mail hyphen is, so let's say I'll put this as new mail and two addresses uh, easy to hyphen user at the rate local host, same machine and now I'm going to use a message. Now you can see here, if you type mail enter, you can see uh, a new email you have received and the message mail number is number two and you can see whatever the content you have in that particular file is picked as an input by using input redirector and you send an email so this is how this is how input redirectors are used in the system and whenever we talk about input so sometimes we talk we, we have to talk about here document also so what is this particular here document is nothing but two redirector two input redirector symbols what is the use of these things if you have a situation where you need to provide multi-line output but not from a file, so how do you use is by using here document. So here document is telling you, so you are connecting to a, uh, a server which is of root user and executing a three command, so which is you are stopping a HTTP service and removing that particular package and displaying whether it is successful or not. So all these three commands you are, you are providing with the here document, so which is nothing but two input read at the symbol and after that you are going to put it as a delimiter so here EOF is a delimiter where you are telling that okay so my my input starts here and after that you are giving again EOF so where you are telling your EOF is ending here 
So certain situations like a search command and certain situations like where SQL plus user database user where they use SQL commands of multi-line multi-line SQL queries, so they go with here document situation. And the next one we are going to talk about is standard output. So what is standard output? So we already talked about standard input. So where we take the input from a file. Now standard output is the standard output we are going to get it on the terminal. Now we need to replace it. We need to get it that particular output to a file. Now. So the output basically, okay, if you see the output is of two types. So one is standard output and the other one is standard error. Let me demonstrate to you. So how, what is this error and what is this output? If you see here, I'm going to use ls command and I'm giving a directory ls slash boot. It is giving me the content and directories in that particular boot directory. So whereas, and if you see the output is getting on the screen and if I would like to replace that one, with a file, I'm going to use ls boot and redirect the, the out file. So now you don't see any output. Where the output went is the output went and stored into a file. Now what happened here is as you are using redirect the symbol, so your shell is going to create a file if the out file doesn't exist. Let's say if the file already exists, so your redirect the symbol is going to overwrite the previous content. Means it removes the previous content and it adds the new content. So, if you have a situation that, okay, so where you need the previous output as well as our previous content as well as the present output to the file, I need to use double redirect symbol, which it is going to append now. So, let's, in our classes, we're going to talk about the redirection only. So, I'm going to see the output on a file now. Now, this output is actually classified into two Thing. So, which is output and error. So, let's talk about error. So, I'm using LSS command. I'm redirecting the output to out file. So, you can see here LSS command not found. Why you are getting still you are, you are redirecting the output to the out file, but still your some message is getting printed on the output screen. Why? Because shell has written an error on the terminal that saying that that command doesn't exist. So, the output usually you see is of standard output. So, LS command is previously has given you output. Now, here LSS, whatever you are getting the output from the shell, that is an error now. So, how do you redirect an error? So, how do we redirect the error is? So, as I shown you here, the output is usually given with one redirect symbol and the error is usually given with two redirect symbol. Now, if you would like to redirect the error, so as, I, as we just seen in the presentation, so you have to use two redirect and the file name. So if you see cat out, you can see the error went to that particular file. I assume you have a situation where you would like to redirect output to a different file and error to a different file. So let me show you. So where do you get output and error? Let's go with ls command ls hyphen ld of slash boot is giving you the output. Let's say I'm giving ls hyphen ld of slash data also. So what it is telling us is so slash data doesn't exist whereas boot is there it has given the output. So ls command has written in both the things. One is error and the other one is output. How do you get, how do you redirect the output to a different file is one redirect to out and error to a different file is to redirect to error. Now if you see the out file, you can see only the output came from ls command. And if you see cat error, the whatever the error came from ls command has been sent to error file. When we use this situations, okay, you use one or you don't use one, the usually the output goes to out file. So if you specify one a redirector symbol or you don't specify one, if you use only the redirector symbol, so it, by default shell assumes that is as a, that redirects as an output. Now here, let's say, let's say you have a situation where if you'd like to redirect both the output and error to a same file. So till now you are redirecting the output and error to two different files. Assume if you have a requirement of sending output and error to a two different files. So how do you do that? So ls, so instead of a number, so you simply use Amazon symbol and redirect the output to the out file. So if you see cat out, you can see the output went to this particular file. So let's say ls hyphen ld slash boot and slash data. 
so it is giving both output and error and if you would like to redirect both to the same file so ambush and redirect and the output file so if you use cat file so you can see both the output and error on the same file and the last one we are going to talk about in this video is the discarding the output so sometimes you will have a requirement you where in case you don't require output on the output terminal neither on your file wherever you are redirecting to in such cases you have a special property file which is slash those slash null so this will help you to redirect uh, redirect output to, your, to the file slash those slash null which it is going to nullify that particular output whatever it is receiving so that's all about in this video thank you